How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donnie here once again. This time we're going to take a look at how to identify functional groups, also known as families, for organic compounds. All right, so the ones we're going to look at are alkenes, alkynes, alcohols, ethers, ketones, aldehydes, organic acids, esters, amines, and amides. We're going to talk about what to look for when you're doing these things, okay? So alkenes. Basically, an alkene, what they all have in common is they have a double bond in the carbon chain. So if I have a carbon chain here, uh, I got a double bond somewhere in it. That's an alkene, right? So sometimes when you're given the condensed molecular formula or condensed structural formula, rather, uh, you have to figure it out. You go, all right, well, I got CH3. I got a C with one H on it, and then I got another C with one H on it and a CH3 there. So how do you know that this is an alkene? Because of these carbons right here, those ones don't have a complete octet. So why don't they have a complete octet? Because there's a double bond in between them. So boom, now they do have a complete octet. So that's what you're looking for. You see the double bond? Is there a double bond? Is there a double bond somewhere? Because that is when you have an alkene. Alkynes. When you have an alkyne, when you have a triple carbon bond. So triple bond in the carbon chain. So Again, you're looking for those triple bonds. If there's a triple bond, it's an alkyne. Uh, condensed structural formula, how do you know? Draw it out. You got CH, and then you got a C, and then you got a CH3. Well, how is that possible? These two carbons don't have complete octets. Why? Because there's a triple bond in between them, and now they do. So you're looking for a triple bond. Alcohols, you're looking for an OH group. So if there's an OH group, you have an alcohol. So their names will also end in OL. Uh, so you're looking for an OH group. So why do they write it like this? Why do they write CH3, CH, OH? Why don't they just put CH2O? Because that's different. This condensed structural formula is telling you that there's a C with an H on it and then an OH on it. But those are separate things. So you have an idea of its structure, even though you read it in the condensed way here. All right? So you're looking for an OH for the alcohol. Ethers. All right, you're looking for an oxygen in the middle of a carbon chain. So you're looking for oxygen connecting two carbon chains. Right? So on ether side of them, they have a carbon chain. <laughs> oh, I hope that helped. All right, so here you can see it goes, all right, well, CH3, and then it says O, and then CH2, and then CH3. So you can tell that that oxygen is in the middle of two carbon chains. So that's how you know you got an ether. There's carbon chains on ether side. <laughs> oh. All right, ketones. Ketones, you're looking for the O in the middle, which is even in its name, right? You're looking for the O in the middle. So it has a carbonyl group, which is this carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen uh, on a secondary carbon. Secondary means that that carbon is connected to two other carbons. So it's a carbon with a carbon on either side of it. All right. Uh, so it's basically just saying it's not on the end carbon. So you're looking for a double bond O in the middle, just like the O in the middle of ketone. So you're looking for C double bond O in the middle of a carbon chain. All right? It'll be written like this in the condensed structural formula, so you can draw it out if you can't tell from it. CH3, CO, and CH3. They go, hey, wait a minute, there must be a double bond O for the carbon and the oxygen to complete their octets. All right, aldehydes, it's just like a ketone, except you're looking for a double bonded O on a terminal carbon, an end carbon. It has a carbonyl group on a primary carbon. So it's a carbon that's at the end of a chain. So you're looking for this. <laughs> I can't even circle it. You're looking for a carbon, double bond O, and off of that carbon is a hydrogen. So that's what you're looking for. And guess what suffix for these ones is al. So like, this would be ethanol, but we'll have a whole other video for all that, okay? So worry about that later. Double bond O on a carbon that has a hydrogen on it. It'll be written kind of like this, CHO. Uh, so that tells you, all right, CH, and then there's an O, and then a CH3. And you go, all right, well, how is that possible? There must be a double bond between the oxygen and the carbon. Organic acids, also known as carboxylic acids, what you're looking for is a C double bond O with an OH on it. So anywhere that you have that, you have an organic acid. So it has a double bond O and an OH. Um, yeah, so it'll look like this. If you've seen the COOH, 
you may be thinking, well, why don't they say CO2H, if anything? Because it's telling you about the structure. You got a CH3, a CH2, and you got a C with an O, and then off another leg of that carbon is an OH group. You go, hey, there's got to be a double bond on that O to complete the octets, and that is the carboxylic acid. All right, esters. Esters are cool. They are, they look kind of like carboxylic acids and ethers. Uh, you have a double bond O, and you have an O in the middle of a carbon chain. So you're looking for that. You're looking for a double bond O, O, and then the rest of a carbon chain. All right, so how do I know that I got an ester, uh, C double bond O, O, and then another carbon chain. So there's an H of a carboxylic acid group is replaced with a carbon chain, right? So if I had uh, a carboxylic acid, it's saying, hey, get rid of that H and then add another carbon chain. So it looks like an ether with a double bonded O on one of the carbons next to the O in the chain, right? So if you ignored this, you'd have an ether, but on, right next to that oxygen, there is another double bond O on one of those carbon chains. That's an ester. That's how you know it's an ester, okay? Uh, it'll look like this in the condensed structure. You go, all right, well, let me draw it out. I'm not sure what's going on. CH3C, I got an O and then another O and a CH2 and a CH3. So we go, hey, got to have the double bond O there. And then, hey, what's this right here? That's an ester. All right, amines. You're looking for a nitrogen. That's the N in amine, right? So you're looking for the nitrogen groups. Anywhere there's a nitrogen group, you have an amine. So it has to have a nitrogen on the chain. Uh, it'll look like this in the condensed structural form. You can see it's got an N in the chain, so it is an amine. And amides. Amides are kind of like amines because they have the NH uh, or the N group, but you also have a carbonyl group. So carbon has double bond O and a nitrogen group on it. So you're looking for this for amides, right? Double bond O on a carbon and then a nitrogen attached to that. So that's the amide. It looks like a carboxylic acid with an N group instead of an OH, right? So carboxylic acid looks like this, and they're saying, hey, get rid of that and make it a nitrogen group. So it'll look like this in the condensed structural formula. You got the double bond O and the NH2. So it would be like CH3, C, O, NH2, and then you got to complete the octet. Boom! There's your amide. All right? So a little review. Alkenes, double bond, alkynes, triple bond, alcohols, OH groups. Ethers, you got a carbon chain with an oxygen in the middle of it, separating it into two carbon chains. Uh, ketones. You have a carbon chain with a double bond O in the middle somewhere, right? So the O in the middle is a ketone. Aldehydes is you have a carbon chain with a double bond O on one of the end carbons. Organic acids or carboxylic acids, you got that C double bond O with an OH, right? Esters, you got the C double bond O, O, and then that H is replaced with another carbon chain. Amines, you got a carbon that has a nitrogen off of it. Anamides, you got a double bond O next to an amine group. So that's everything. Uh, some of this is memorization, all right? Try and find tricks to help you remember it, but you need to know how to do all this stuff. You need to be able to look at it and determine what family it belongs in just based on its structure, all right? So I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Goodbye.